Welcome to the Film Fan Club show, everybody. Well, tonight we gather to grieve. We bid a not so fond farewell to a time when men flew, women wielded extraordinary powers, and cities saved by crusaders were the norm. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 2023 stands as the year the superhero movie met its untimely demise. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. First, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania shrunk at the box office with a mere $476 million worldwide. Honestly, that's barely enough to cover Hank Pym's Viagra. And let's not forget Shazam! Fury of the Gods, which mustered a, a pitiful $134 million. They might buy you a couple shiny lightning bolts if you're lucky. But hold on to your seats, folks, because The Flash sprinted right to disappointment, barely crossing the finish line at $271 million. And speaking of unexpected surprises, Blue Beetle flapped its wings and fell flat on its face, earning a laughable $130 million. Well deserved, too. Blue Beetle might be the only superhero movie I've ever walked out of. A bland, predictable plot coupled with an unlikable lead whose acting is better suited for TikTok. Now let's not forget the highly anticipated The Marvels. With a star like Brie Larson and Marvel's Midas Touch, surely it delivered, right? Wrong! It mustered a mere $206 million at the box office, which could barely cover Monica Rambeau's energy expenses. And what about our underwater ally? Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom swam into theaters, only to sink with a less than royal sum of $400 million. It's worth noting that the Marvels and Aquaman 2 were sequels to billion dollar films. That's a bigger downgrade than my ex's new boyfriend. The only undeniably profitable superhero movie from the past year was Guardians of the Galaxy 3. It brought in nearly $850 million, and that would be a promising sign for Marvel if the film's director wasn't jumping ship for DC to rebuild their universe. Yeah, good luck with that! Now, I know what you're thinking. What does the future hold for superhero movies? Well, fear not, because the all-knowing oracle of Sony Pictures has whispered a secret into my ear. Now, brace yourselves because I have a feeling that the surefire box office smash, Adam, Madam Web, is just what we've been waiting for. Yes, this weekend, Madam Web will spin her web of cinematic brilliance, rescuing the superhero genre from its untimely demise. So dust off your spandex suits, because the hope is on the horizon, and it's come in the form of Sydney Sweeney's sweet, sweet talent. But in the meantime, Let's come together and light a candle for the fallen heroes of 2023. For truly, it was the year the Super Friends lost their groove, and even their capes seemed a little wrinkled. From Ant-Man to Blue Beetle, Jonathan Majors to Brie Larson, they may be gone, but not... Oh, who am I kidding? I've forgotten them already. And joining me now to talk about Madam Webb, he is the co-host of the Quality Check podcast, and he's the creator of the Minuteman series on YouTube. Daniel Posey is back with us. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Sam. Thanks for inviting me and, and uh, allowing me to join. Talk about probably the worst movie of uh, a decade, maybe. I don't know. We'll get to that here a little bit. I know. What an honor. I was going to say, you just get the honor of talking about Madam Web. It's amazing. Uh, Daniel, it's good to see you again. It's been like late 2021, I feel like, was the last time you were on yep. the show. So it's it's good to catch up with you. Uh, I mentioned in your intro, you got uh, not only the Quality Check podcast, which is still going strong, very good, mm -hmm. but you've started a, a little uh, like a series on YouTube. Would you like to tell yep. my audience just a little bit about what that is? Yeah, funny enough, because last time I was on your show, we were talking about a short film series as a part one, part two that I ended up doing in the pandemic. And I did that because obviously being locked down, uh, having very limited capabilities of what I would normally end up doing in terms of uh, uh, production. And so that was a series that I ended up doing all by myself. And the Minuteman spawned from that because part two, I was waiting for some graphics in which I went all the way to DC uh, to shoot the open for part part two. And so we were, when we were there, uh, we did this like really interesting like spin around and we were at the National Mall, uh, but it was to show that no one was there and that was the open to that. Well, while I was waiting for the graphic artist to literally Thanos everyone out of the shots, because there are a few people that were in the backgrounds, uh, I was waiting on that. And so I was getting 
Nancy, I really wanted to do something to talk about. Uh, it spawned from talking about my short film. And then from that, I say, you know what? I, I love, as you mentioned, uh, been a uh, co-host on Quality Check Podcast. I love talking movies, but I still wanted more. I'm still kind of like yearning to do more. And so I created this Minuteman series where in one minute, I'll explain, um, I'll cover one topic. Uh, for example, with Madam Webb, as of last Friday, um, it was looking at three clairvoyant characters within film and kind of looking at good clairvoyant characters or good movies that are uh, utilizing that special ability. And so um, every Friday I release a full minute and then every day, Sam, I've almost killed myself literally <laughs> creating a video a day. I accomplished that. In, last January, I set out to do that. I, I hit that mark this January, so last month. Uh, one video a day I produced for a full year. And I'm still doing that. I'm still hitting every vid uh, video a day. And that's tough because in addition to the Minuteman, there are these shorts where I end up going and I look, I try to find something that's an interesting tidbit of a film. And I talk about that in a very short, that's shorter than a minute. Normally that's about 30 to 40 seconds. But uh, so that's my Minuteman series going strong. And um, like I said, it nearly knocked me out because there have been so many times I'm like, I just don't know how I'm going to do it. Yeah. But um, I love being able to talk about film. And so, again, thank you for inviting me on the show. Even though we are talking about Madam Webb, it's always good to talk about movies with you because I know that's something that we've always bonded over since uh, we first met. But, uh, yeah, with, with Minuteman, it's, um, it's something that now it's kind of going into phase two. I'm trying to figure out what is phase two. What will that look like? How do I keep growing it? How do I keep expanding it and doing certain things? Because... I got really good feedback on Godzilla Minus One. I created a video of a behind the scenes look and that got a lot of interesting feedback and good traction. And that's something that I set out to start doing. And that's another thing, anyone who's interested in doing videos, you probably won't find a return right away. It's gonna take a while to build an audience, build that feedback. Oh yeah. And after finally getting that, that's been super rewarding, but also, Hearing like, okay, this is why I set out to do it. And then I'm getting that feedback of like, hey, we we see this and here, here's some pointers, like some things we like, some things that could improve. And I'm like, hey, I'm here for it. I love that. So that's kind of part of the discussion of creating that and keeping that discussion going. That's something that I love doing. It's a great series. I, I watch, I haven't seen all of them because you what you I like is that you're so regular with your uploads i'm here i'm very hit and miss but you you're you're <laughs> you can count on it right there so it's definitely a good subscribe i think they're informative and funny uh and, yeah. and, and very well produced especially for just you, the bang for your buck you get in watching a video in just a minute so of well, course quality check podcast is on apple and spotify wherever you get your podcasts awesome. and then uh your youtube channel is just at like daniel posey that's uh at director daniel posey I changed it because it was an old an old handle that I created, you know, like high school. It was like whenever everyone was like, you know, sexy beast one, two, three at right. hotmail.com. It wasn't that, but it was kind of close to like uh, an absurd name. And so I changed it whenever YouTube allowed to change the handle. So now it's at director Daniel Posey. Perfect. And then and then let, now let's talk about not something that's not so optimistic. Uh, Madam Web, uh, the Sony, uh, the, the latest entry in the Sony Spider-Man universe of Marvel characters or whatever they they're calling their cinematic universe now. Spider-Verse. Uh, I've never been a big fan of these movies. Now, Into the yeah. Spider-Verse is such a weird anomaly because mm -hmm. Into the Spider-Verse is great. Across the Spider-Verse, a step down, still very good. Uh, mm -hmm. But the Venom first movie, I didn't really like the first Venom. Everyone, a lot of people pe uh, pretend that it's really good now because it's it, it's campy and it kind of knows yeah. what it is and knows it's not great. It's just having fun. I get that, but still, I really I like the idea of the Venom storyline, and I think they kind of butchered. I've never liked the their take on Venom. I did not like Morbius. Who did? Uh, Craven the Hunter doesn't look very good, and now Madam Web. It's like these. Who we need to stop Sony from making these movies? It's it, they just keep getting worse. Uh, the movie I, I want to talk real quick. Madam it's... Web is not doing well at the box office, so it looks like I didn't like it. The audiences didn't like it. A lot of people, Daniel, did this movie ever have a chance? No, no, I don't. Leading up to this, here's the other thing Sony released one trailer for this, and there's this whole thing too that Dakota Johnson fired. Her, uh, uh, her representation after the first trailer dropped. And <laughs> you can see why, because like the first trailer, like I feel like Sony's like, you know what? We know exactly what we have on our hands. This is going to be a hot steaming 
pile of dog crap. And we're not going to put a lot of effort into this. And at the same time, it's, it's received by the same amount as well. And then my theater going experience within the first couple of minutes, there were there was a group of like maybe four or five people that got up and walked out within the first like five to 10 minutes. And I was like, you are national treasures because you're saving yourselves from something. And you know right away what it's setting up to be. And this, yeah, this, Sam, this was bad. This was really bad. Believe everything you're hearing about this on Rotten Tomatoes everywhere else. This is bad. It's great. Maybe I'm naive, but like, I, I, I think there's like an idea there, you know, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. you could do something with this. I, I, I unlike Venom where it's like yeah. Venom, if you don't have Spider-Man, you have to have Venom. You have to have Spider-Man and Venom. They go together. You can't have a Venom without a Spider-Man. So that project I've never been behind with Madam Web. I'm like, all right, it's weird doing these Spider-Man universe characters without Spider-Man, but I could see maybe you could do something there. Even yeah. whenever the trailer came out, I was like, uh, well, you know, in the Amazon, you know, with spiders when my mom died or something. And it's like, yeah, this, the, there's the memes. But I don't know. Sydney Sweeney is there. Who knows? I like Sydney Sweeney. Um, no, I, I agree, though. That's the thing. There's a nugget there. And especially I'm not familiar with Madam Web, but I went back and leading up to this movie, I started doing some research to find out that she comes from the 1980s comics. And that's the origin story of Madam Web. And I feel like there's enough there that you can take that and lean into that and do something really fascinating. But another thing that I'm not a huge fan of with a lot of these Sony Spider-Man spinoff movies is that we get like these anti-heroes or these villains, like say Venom or Morbius. They're trying to give them redeeming qualities. Why not just lean into certain things to what these characters truly are? And yeah. Madam Web, again, I don't, I'm not very familiar with Madam Web, but it seems like they're trying to go back and forth they're confused about the writing process about who they want to make this character what they want the story to be and there's so much of even though there is a piece of a story there some really good ideas the execution everything was just awful and it just as i've said this seems like the most ai written directed acted movie of anything i've seen in a long time and it seems like it's an algorithm of a movie of that's how it was pieced together because it's like oh these seem like good bits let's shove them together and then it, we got what we got for the longest time uh the dc uh company uh, dc comics warner brothers i'm not exactly who mandated it but they mm-hmm. didn't allow a superman live action series to happen or a batman live action series to happen because they didn't want a lesser version of these characters to water down the brand so mm-hmm. like they that's why you get a smallville that's why you get a, a gotham all these different things because they thought if you had a lesser character that would re- kind of reflected poorly on the the major companies the major brands the major flagship franchises then it would lessen the brand that, that that's exactly what madam web does to the spider-man universe i think yeah. because it's in this weird nebulous zone where it doesn't it doesn't have any of the, car- the, ca- the the cast members, rather, from the previous Spider-Man movies. It didn't even know if it was going to be connected to Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man or if it was going to be connected to Tom Holland's Spider-Man. I think with the 2003 setting, it, it may be connected to Tom Holland's Spider-Man, but then that would make Tom Holland like 14 years old in Spider-Man Homecoming, so that doesn't make any sense to me because um, he, he seems a little older than 14 in that movie. Right. Um. It, but the way it does, uh, then the, we're going to kind of, this is a, a spoiler, a middle ground spoiler review. We'll get more into spoilers as we go on. But it's mm-hmm. no, at this point, I think it's clear that it has a pregnant Mary Parker in it and she gives birth at the end of the movie. And so it just, this, this, this movie is kind of a backdoor Spider Man origin yeah. a little bit as well. So it just, it, it makes me not excited to see more Spider Man stuff. So that's yeah. this movie is so bad that it's an insult to other better movies. Right. Yeah. And that they play this. It's a risk. It really is a risk in which they are hoping. I, I feel like it's a short term benefit versus long term loss because you yeah. end up having this exactly like you said, going forward, this is going to take the wind out of Craven the Hunter. There's oh, yeah. no way. Moving forward, people are like, oh, yeah, this sounds, you know what, Venom, Venom, let there be carnage. I'd say we can, we can, you know, be a little apologetic to that because it comes from camp. But now we get to this 
And then anything moving forward has like destroyed their chances with that. And it's taking a punch to the Spider-Man brand itself. And unless you're talking about, say, the animated, because you said that's kind of like an anomaly that sits off in a category by itself. Yeah. But as far as like the Spider-Man brand, Sony's doing nothing but hurting themselves by releasing this and trying to tie in, but they can't. Because one of the most annoying things with this movie, there are a lot of annoying things. But there's a game they play about guess the name of the mm-hmm. baby. And it's all because of a copyright issue. I, Sam, I almost lost my mind. <laughs> I hated that. I hated it. I did not like that at all. Um, that went on way too long. And it's trying to set up, you know, more of the story of Madam Webb while like piecing into like this fun, like tongue, tongue in cheek, like, oh, what's the baby's name going to be? Yeah. And like, this is nonsense. Who does this? It's it's so desperate, like you said. It feels like an AI wrote like a like a mm-hmm. like a uh, when it like le- this felt feels like a 2015 Fantastic Four kind of feel. Yeah. It yes. feels like some of the lesser Fox X Men movies. This feels yeah. it, it feels so desperate, but it feels like it's aping the mar the better version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where it's like look, it all ties together. But now it's like. It, it kind of goes along with superhero fatigue where, I mean, people yeah. are done with shared universes, I feel like. So this movie with all of its in-your-face connections, quote-unquote, but not connections to the Spider-Man universe, not only does it make Spider-Man, but it makes this just more of a headache. Um, it, 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 I, I guess as we start getting more into the plot details, again, we're going to kind of spoil the aspects of the movie. If So if you haven't seen it yet, don't see the movie, but, but we are about to spoil <laughs> parts of it. Uh, one of my major issues is that I feel like it also, it cheapens the Spider-Man brand, but in the universe itself of Spider-Man, it makes him less special. Because my mm-hmm. my understanding of Spider Man was that he's j- there's just this one spider that got radioactive or it got you know t- tested on and it ha- just happened to bite Peter Parker. Now there's a whole race of magical spider people in the Amazon, and the only reason our Spider Man exists is because of the, of the Madam Web shenanigans and all that. It's just it's ridiculous. I didn't like yeah, that. How that- did you feel about that part? No, no, that's a, yeah, it's exactly how I felt too, because now it's like, all right, so now you're giving us this origin of this radioactive spider that we have to go back to um, the Osborne plant where this was where Peter originally ended up, but it's not special. Like, that's what I got from all of this. Like you said, it's not, it does make Spider-Man special. It makes this now connecting tissue special and it's like oh so where as we progress is this how we get the spider women for example what um who it's teased in the trailers but then also these other characters without getting in too much spoilers just yet but then also madam webb herself where so much of that too is like all right so are you now pinning this on madam webb being the spider-man before spider-man or the introduction I, there's so much that in terms of what they were trying to go for that they left so many questions and they asked or they set it up rather i don't think they really asked anything because if they did the the answers too were were lacking there we just didn't get any answers but yeah i do agree it does cheapen the whole spider-man brand period and the character in universe and and in a meta sense, it's just this movie because now the, what I'm rewatching Game of Thrones right now, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm uh, some of these great characters I'm getting reintroduced to in season one, and I'm like, oh yes, but then I get annoyed because then I remember, oh yeah, this same character that's you know greatly written right now is is a. Is, does stupid things in the later seasons because the you know the writing fell off and now whenever i watch you know whether i don't again this movie doesn't know if it's connected to tom holland it doesn't know if it's connected to andrew garfield but whenever i watch other spider-man movies i don't want to sit there and think oh yeah that only exists because fucking madam web tie just <laughs> leached itself on to the the better spider-man movies it's yeah and i guess the next part of that is is the introduction or the inclusion rather of ben parker and then not May, but his, but Ben's sister-in-law, Mary, mm-hmm. Peter's mom. So what did you, I mean, I, it, Adam Scott plays Ben a uh, supporting role. I guess I, my question is a very broad one. What did you think of their inclusion in this movie? Again, it was all forced in. It was shoehorned in. It was one of those where, um, especially whenever 
we have that and it's very early on in the movie like in the first 10 minutes 10 to 15 minutes and then we've got cassie webb talking to ben parker and they just get back and they're at the shed and they're um talking about relationships and ben says something of like i met someone real special and then she's like oh what's her name and then he just like oh yeah and he's like eating and i'm like Okay, a lot of this too seems like who is speaking this way? Who is actually in real life this like saying what he's saying, but then also responding in the same way that Cassie did, where she was like, Oh, she must be pretty special if you're not willing to say her name. I'm like, What? What is this? Hold on. This again is so many laughable moments where I'm surprised that it got past so many levels. Of and I understand there is like studio interference. There are notes. There is coming from you know the top down that whole idea. But at the same time, there's got to be a point where like we got to we got to change this. Whether it's ad lib, whether you're writing something, tweaking something in the script. Uh, but that goes for the characters themselves because Ben is like plugged in in various moments throughout this movie just to say, hey, remember we've got Uncle Ben here. Yeah. He's um he's here. He's not really serving much of a purpose. But um, it's more of an annoyance, I feel, because of the character was, could have been, that could have been something special or interesting. And um, it made me dislike Uncle Ben more because of, like, so, and I like Adam Scott, but I feel like Adam Scott tried, and there are moments where I feel like Dakota Johnson tried, but there are moments, it's almost because of how the film was shot, you don't really know what part came first, you know? Yeah. But there are moments where you're like, oh, they just gave up during that. It's like, they just, they said, I don't care. Screw it. Moving it, forward, I'm just going to phone this in. And then other moments are like, all right, they were trying during this part. Um, I feel like Adam tried for most of it, but it was just like the character. Um, and then also the whole uh, Peter Parker, the birth, you know, being pregnant uh, and, and like the delivery of Peter, all of that. It just was, again, just a distraction from the overall Madam Web of, you know, there's a way to do it, of working that in, I feel. But again, it was just not, it just felt so forced. Just stapled on top of, uh, of this. Yeah. I almost, you could, can, there is a world where I could be convinced that Adam Scott's character wasn't even Ben Parker until halfway <laughs> through the production. And then they're like, you know, like an executive came in and was like, I need some more Spider-Man. Can you just, this is just a yeah. random side character. Can you just call him Ben Parker? Yeah. And then, and then they reshot, uh, I could, I could, cause you know, there are a lot of reshoots. It's just, you never know what, at what point certain elements were added to appease a studio narrative. Um, yeah. It was, and, and Ben and Adam Scott is, is it, nothing against him. I think he's a fine actor, but he's such a weird choice for this. Yeah. Um, it, 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 one uh, original, speaking of reshoots, one of the original ideas that I've heard is that Ezekiel Sims, our villain in this movie, who uh, was with who was with Dakota Johnson's in the Am mom in the Am Amazon, what is the line? Before researching spiders before she died. It's something ridiculous. Anyway, Ezekiel <laughs> Sims is the villain. And yeah, he's he's like the bodyguard. He's there to protect her in the Amazon while they're doing the research. But yet he obviously in the opening five, ten minutes turns against actually it's like maybe two or three minutes yeah. turns on her and everyone else well, and this whole research team. And in part in that scene. There's the zooms. I don't know if it if it was distracting for you as well, but the camera yeah. is shot in like a documentary. I, I don't know yeah. if it's going for a faux documentary style mm -hmm. or like if it's it with the the camera zooms and the shakes were so distracting. It felt yes. like I like Man of Steel, but it felt like the, some of the worst parts of Man of Steel, where the camera is shaky and zoomy for no with no intention behind it. Right. Uh, it was so distracting. And then thirty years later, Ezekiel Sims looks like the same. But just a little bit, of, a little bit of gray here and gray there. Here, he yeah. looks basically the same. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, and then his minus whole, shoes too, by the way. Uh, and, and and he he uh, is on a plot to kill these women, and this kind of leads into another issue with the narrative that I had. He's we see in in the flash forward, we see these women in these costumes kill him. So he wants to kill them before that can happen. And I guess he goes before their origin story. So the the way this film plays out is their origin is never really portrayed in this movie. 
uh, yeah. the so it, we see them in costumes that because Ezekiel Sims has the the flash the the flash forward of these girls killing mm-hmm. him. So he basically and I, I I as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, he's going to be the reason that they team up in the first place. It's like a time. It's like a paradox kind of mm-hmm. thing. So that I mean, predictable and. It's disappointing just not seeing them in costume. I know, it, yeah. other than in flash forwards, it's not. It's 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 disappointing not seeing them in costume. What did you think of the introduction of our villain? How he creates, you know, the paradox of how he creates the thing that kills him, and yeah. the lack of uh, costumes. So the villain was, you know, I'll just say it feels like the worst villain we've. I don't. I don't know if I can't say we've ever had, but he's bad. <laughs> Like, he's, there's so much of, like, from start to finish, the, again, the, the the actor who's playing him, there's so much of, I feel like it was a direction issue. It was so much of, like, deliver the lines this way, but it he came off so wooden and so static, and uh, the character was also that way. And I feel like that was a choice made, saying, we want this character to be, like a T-1000 mm-hmm. from Terminator, where it's like no emotion. But at the same time, even that has a personality because of being a cyborg or being something futuristic of it being a machine that is a cold-blooded killer and there's no emotion. Here, it's like he they were trying to set up some emotion, but he was devoid of any. And then at the same time, it was just his presentation at the same time. Uh, the the introduction to the villain to I'm like okay I see where we're going with this, but I also I'm confused because like he has now the spider and he's supposed to have these powers but yet he's panicked because now he started to have these visions of future events and yeah he's trying to stop it but then how he's killed in the future doesn't it's like he's not using his powers to save himself because again you're stripping this character does he lose his powers is that why he's thrown off a building and killed by these three spider women in the future um what's going on why is he scared of them and it is like a terminator type storyline to kill them before they Mm -hmm. get their powers but then again at the same time What have been a lot more interesting is, and it was teased in the discussion with his his assistant and and him, but whenever they, she, I think she said something along the lines of, um, you know, maybe you're the reason why they become the way that they are. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. We never explore that at all. That's dropped. That's just teased. And I thought that would have been a much more interesting way of, the way of like trying to stop your death is to actually give the powers to those that you're trying to stop in the first place. That I found to be interesting. But as far as like, you know, um, the 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 villain and, and everything period was just, was was so bad. And um, it was just so wooden. And then the uh, moving from that to the, the spider woman in terms of seeing, so it'd be two spider woman and spider girl. And then obviously Madam Web. We don't see them really in outside of the, flash forwards in costume until the very end of the movie and then we see this and it's like yeah. hold on wait everything is happening so fast what just happened it's like you're tossing this in there at the last minute because you've used this in your marketing and yeah. so you don't get sued like what happened with the whole <laughs> Danny Boyle yesterday movie you know whenever Anna de Armas was in all the trailers yeah. <laughs> and then they this person sued because they rented the movie hoping to see Anna de Armas she wasn't in it because her scenes were cut that's what this seems like they're like oh wow we totally missed the we we dropped the ball on this we got to throw them in at the last minute let's do a bunch of like them in costume and um that way we don't get sued okay we're good yeah, that's it was how it felt just the most awkward montage of just i don't even in a couple things is the ending is is the the kind of t- t- touching on another point that i had product placement is out of out of this oh, out of God. out of the out of control in this movie yeah i don't like the product placement the villain literally gets killed by a pepsi sign uh yes. somehow madam webb is blind by the end of the movie i'm not clear on how that yeah. happened 
Uh, and then she just is is like I, she's not mad about it at all. She takes the loss of her eyesight so well. She's yeah. such a good sport about it. And then she's like, I have everything I need. Suddenly she's become best friend. I don't really buy the character development between yeah. the, 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 the girls in this movie. Like, I'm sure they would have become closer after uh, experiences like that. But I don't buy it's not like the writing and the acting really sold me on their yeah. growing relationship it did not uh and then just yeah she just talks about how like we're we're all gonna become we're gonna form the avengers in the in the future and then that's that and then we just get a montage of them in costume dancing around and <laughs> the and the costumes look i think sydney sweeney's costume looks fine yeah. i think a couple of the costumes look fine i guess i don't yeah. know any of their names now that i think about it other than sydney sweeney and dakota johnson but the, yeah Dakota that, Johnson that, does not look good in her Madam Web costume, oh, yeah. but Sydney Swinney looks fine. It, it's it's a very mixed bag. But the fact mm -hmm. is, there's no in the superhero movie. There's barely barely any superheroes. Yeah, yeah, and that, and two with that, it's only for Madam Web's clairvoyance use during convenience. For example, you mentioned her going blind. You're telling me that she didn't see that, like Maybe. that whenever she went blind yeah and it's like she was like wait hold on you're you're saying that you are seeing this pepsi co sign drop on the main bad guy 50 different ways but you didn't see that you would be blinded i guess by the fireworks like you got shot in the face or something and like so there's so much of seeing into the future but it's only used at a point of convenience again like whenever he gra ezekiel grabs her hand and she gets a little poisoned. She didn't see some of that happening. And then again, there's like so much of where they could have gone with this and actually focused on this character that is dropped. And it's it's so it's so haphazard, I would say, in terms of how things are thrown in. And it's um so frustrating, but it's laughable, but also not good laughable. Like not like this is a let's go see a bad movie. This was like not a bad movie to see and laugh about those things. I did laugh a lot. I'll be honest. I did laugh a lot. I know. I don't know if I would recommend seeing it in theaters just on the basis of so bad it's yeah. good. But I, I'll be honest. As as we were getting close to the release of Madam Web, I knew it was uh -huh. going to be bad, and I was like, I can't wait to laugh at it. And I did laugh at it. So so I can't say it's like a miserable experience necessarily. It was a uh, it it was it, it was entertaining, I guess, just because some of the choices, man. It just does I, feel like the whole team just gave up at a certain point. You're right, and that I was curious too because for that there were a lot of moments where it, plot wise, so much of the plot I kept thinking as it was going on that was taking me out of it and saying I couldn't enjoy it as much because of those reasons of I wasn't I wasn't laughing as much, but I was like out of more like oh man this is bad because yeah. it's taking itself so serious and it's like not leaning into that camp but uh and, and it's it's oh wow yeah there the, when you there the, a couple things just before as we in our last five minutes here uh when you take on great responsibility great power <laughs> will come i'm like don't do that movie again it's just no. tying it it's it's just a leech just no. attaching itself to a better character better franchise better you know ip in in spider-man just trying to just siphon it what, what it can off of the spider-man ip it's so pathetic and then the ending is madam web I, I mentioned the the villain is killed by product placement and, and madam web part of that is madam web literally splits herself into several different versions of herself yeah. and you in the in, in it you'd be like okay well how do you visually show that it it's just as it looks just as cheap as you could imagine the laziest way to show that would be is just like little spooky ghost versions of her <laughs> that they can touch and and hold on to somehow Anyways, it was it was it, this movie is a laugh riot at some points, and Sydney Sweeney <laughs> looks great. So it's a mixed bag. Would not recommend. I, I probably don't want to financially support it though. I do hope Sony. I mean, my last question to you, I guess, is where do mm -hmm. we go if this if this is bad, and then Craven the Hunter is is equally bad or or about as bad? Yeah. Where does the Sony Spider Man universe of Marvel characters go from here? They really do need to James Gunn reboot it. Just like. <laughs> Just just start over. Just, you know what? You had this idea. Um, shelve it. End it, I guess, with Venom 3, because Venom 3 is coming. I guess wrap it all up. Um, because there's this whole, like, leaning toward or going, trying to drive 
for the Sinister Six, right? That's yeah. how I'm understanding that they're trying to set all of this up. There's a way you can do that, but the way that they've done this is not working and it's bad. And I say just start over, tie it in, do, do more like a collaborative effort with, say, Marvel. And I would say if Sony really wanted, they don't have a streaming platform. What if they were to turn this into like, I hate to... I hate to end up going back to the whole Disney Plus model because a lot of those shows have have, have failed. Um, as, especially like there's a start there, but then they drop off. What if they were to take this and put this on Disney Plus and then Sony's using this as a means to create those one-offs like, oh, if you want to know more of their backstory, but create an actual good story because... yeah, And that's another thing I hope you said financially that this is... I hate saying this, but we do kind of vote with our dollars, right? So if you go out and support this in this way, then that's giving credence to we can continue this. But if it does poorly, it's like there's an acting a change here. And that's where there needs to be a change here, desperately. Yeah, they learned the wrong lesson. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of voting with your dollar, and too many people saw Venom 1 and 2 and <laughs> voted with their dollar that away. So then they got the wrong <laughs> lessons from that. They're like, oh, yeah, let's... Yeah. Lean hard. Let's go into Morbius. Let's go into Madam Web. Hopefully, if with Madam Web and Morbius failing and Craven the Hunter, I hate to wish failure on anything, but if we want better movies, right. yes. it's, it is about supporting movies that are good and, yes, yeah. not supporting movies that are bad. Director Daniel Posey on YouTube. That's where you can find his Minutemen, Minuteman series of videos. Mm -hmm. Quality Check Podcast is on Apple and Spotify. Daniel Posey, thanks so much for joining the show. Good to see you, man. Sam, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And my next guest is an L.A.-based actor. Peyton Grufik is back on the show. Hey, Peyton, good to see you. Dude, it's good to see you. It's been a while since you've been on the show. We were just talking about it's been, I think, 2020, like, one? Was that the last what, time you were on the uh, show? Yeah. Was that? Oh, shoot. Now the dates are getting meshed into my head. Was that pre-pandemic or was that? That was right. That was... We were still, like, in the, uh, like, at the time, the big, it was before Spider-Man No Way Home. So, like, at the time. Oh, okay. Oh, no, you talked about Spider-Man no, no Way Home with me. That I did talk last... about Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah. So the pandemic was, that was, like, that marked the end of the pandemic era, at least at the movies. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And now we've got Madam Webb and Argyle out. So, you know, now you know we've recovered. <laughs> Thank goodness, Cinema right? is saved. Oh, thank goodness. Well, I, we were just talking about Madam Web with my previous guest, uh, and then now I haven't. I teased at the end of last week's show that I was going to talk about Argyle as well, and nobody that I talked to is interested in this movie, and I'm just curious as to why. You obviously haven't seen Madam Web, but you also haven't seen Argyle. Uh, my question to you is, why haven't you seen these potential masterpieces? You know, it is my own fault. I haven't seen these potential masterpieces because advertising has gone insane here in Los Angeles. I never even heard of Argyle until a couple weeks ago. But when I tell you Argyle has taken over every single bus stop <laughs> in Burbank, is it is an understatement. Like, it, it just popped out, out of nowhere. I still don't even know what the movie's about, but there are posters for it everywhere now. Yeah. And... <laughs> The movies, uh, the trailer would have you believe a different storyline than what the movie actually is. And I think that's what a lot okay. of the people were kind of upset about. I, I don't want to spoil too much of the amazing potential hit film oh. Argyle, but uh, it teases like this, this book writer who writes these spy novels and then does she before, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't you know it, her spy novels are real life and these eventually are actually happening and she's going to meet the real version of Argyle who's played by Henry Cavill. You think it's a Henry Cavill vehicle based on yeah. the on the trailers the movie's not a, a henry cavill vehicle it's about her played the main author character played by bryce dallas howard and sam rockwell who is a real spy but he's not obviously argyle and it, it was uh it, it does feel like a little bit of a bait and switch so i, I it, uh, it have you seen the kingsman movies because i really like the Kingsman yes. movies you know, yeah, the yeah, same yeah. director who did those movies returns to do this movie. They even have a mid credit scene that kind of ties like, ooh, this might be in the same universe as the King oh, movies. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't, I hope not. I... It was, it's a bad, it, it's unfortunate. I saw it. I saw Madam Web. It was, it's, February has been a very lackluster uh, <laughs> month of the box office. Let's say, I also saw Lisa Frankenstein. Have you seen the previews or any trailers Dude, or anything for that? I want to see Lisa Frankenstein. It's a good premise. I like Diablo Cody. Diablo Cody wrote uh, yes. uh, uh, Jennifer's Body. I love Jennifer's Body. It, but 
Lisa Frankenstein's kind of somebody else said that it's not better than the sum of its parts. And I kind of agree with that. Like it's a fun premise. You have some fun with the idea, but it doesn't really go anywhere memorable. Yeah. Uh, uh, Catherine Newton is good. And Cole Sprouse, it's nice to, as a sweet life of Zach and Cody fan, it's nice to see Cole Sprouse get some work. But I don't know. Do you yeah. think you're going to see it or maybe wait for the, the streaming Absolutely. kind of thing? Me and my wife love what we call just uh, like just the goofy horror movies that are strictly just to have a good time they're not breaking any new ground they're not doing anything revolutionary this isn't going to win any awards right but those are kind of the horror movies we're all about it's our favorite genre of film so dude we're throwing on it all the time there's a movie we saw on tiktok ads where a woman's stop motion puppet comes to life and haunts her and it's called stop motion and it's just like we watched that it looked ridiculous and we were like oh yeah we're all about this <laughs> We're, we're watching this now. I appreciate your enthusiasm. And that kind of is a good segue into something that I'm actually enthusiastic for is uh, Deadpool 3. I have a little bit of a concern. Well, we'll talk about it in the trailer. But what I want to just throw to you, of course, you know, you haven't seen, you skipped out on Madam Web. Is Deadpool 3 <laughs> based on the trailer? Did you like the trailer? Is it enough to make you see something like that in theaters? Yeah. So I've actually been on Marvel fatigue for a little bit. I have not watched a lot of Marvel projects in a long time, even though I have people around me telling me I really need to. Like uh, Loki, I'm told, like, I need to watch. Lo you're shaking your head at me. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I didn't you like disagree. Loki. And that's part of what I don't like about the Deadpool 3 trailer is the TVA, okay. the time police, who yes. come and arrest him. It's all from Loki. And I'm like, ah, keep this away from Loki. I don't want it to be tied to that. Right. But I will say, from watching it, this is probably going to be the first Marvel project I've seen in a long time. Really? Wait, I so do think I'm going to check it out. You saw No Way Home. Was that the last Marvel Not movie No Way you Home, saw in and theaters? then I saw Doctor Strange off of the uh, hype of No Way Home. Yeah. And then the only Disney Plus shows I've watched were WandaVision when that first came out, and I watched Moon Knight, and I really enjoyed Moon Knight. Okay, I haven't seen Moon Knight. I I I, I skipped Secret Invasion. I skipped Ms. Marvel. Yeah. I skipped She-Hulk. I watched the last episode because everybody said it was so ridiculous that I had to see, <laughs> and it was ridiculous. I watched it because I heard it was really bad. But I skipped all these Disney Plus shows, and then Deadpool three. I, I want to see because of not because of what Disney has done, not because of what Marvel was done, but because of ironically what the Fox universe set up right. in the first two Deadpool movies and Logan as well was so good. So it's it's yeah. in a we we're in a weird place whenever uh, Disney, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is having to like crop up something that we used to shit on to kind yeah. of get us back interested. Yeah, no, it's very interesting, and it's just. Uh... I mean, uh, there's so much drama happening in the MCU right now, too. There's people getting fired. There's, And so it's just like, dude, it looks like a train wreck right now. And uh, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall behind the scenes and see what they got planned for the future of this. What phase are they calling this? What this phase is, is this? Phase five yeah. is where we're at. This is phase five. Which is okay. entirely arbitrary because I'm pretty sure phase four supposedly ended with Wakanda forever, which is like, what? it's just like, it's trying to tell us that, okay, we're in a different phase where we've moved up, but really nothing is, none of the leadership has changed. None of yeah. the, sto the story decisions have changed, except for maybe now with Jonathan Majors having left. Right. Because they, because of, external factors they had to drop jonathan majors as an actor so now maybe they'll move away from the kang storyline this reminds me of the next thing i wanted to talk to you about is the fantastic forecasting uh, surely you must have seen this right yes are you excited I, by it i'm excited i don't have strong feelings about it like i think a lot of other people do i know a lot of people are very vocal about uh like pedro pascal being cast and i've seen a lot of people Talk about, I don't know if this is just my side of the internet, but a lot of people are fans of the casting of Invisible Woman in The Thing. A lot of people are not a fan of the casting of uh, Pedro Pascal and uh, Eddie Stranger from Stranger Things. Things. I forget yeah. his name. I don't. I just uh, know him as the Stranger Things kid, and I haven't even seen yeah. that season's, uh, season of Stranger Things. But yeah, I, I, I'm kind of, I, I kind of get where people are coming from that you mentioned, you know, or I, I get a little bit of Pedro Pascal fatigue 
almost. And then the Stranger Things, anytime one of the Stranger Things kids shows up in another project, I almost instinctively roll my eyes, which isn't fair. <laughs> That's not fair right. of me. But we're in that phase now where I'm just like, I don't really, I don't really care about that thing. We're we're past it. Uh but Vanessa Kirby is a good choice. I love the Mission Impossible franchise. She's great in a couple of those. I liked her in the early seasons of The Crown. I don't know if she's a really comedic actress. And I feel like a Marvel project is typically a little bit a little bit more lighthearted. There's some jokes flowing. And I don't know if she's going to have that kind of appeal. Uh, I don't know, though. I, I So far, I don't... What I commented on the Facebook post on the Facebook post whenever they announced the the new cast, I I I commented from the studio that brought you Eternals, Multiverse of Madness, Quantumania, and the Marvels, and it's just just to kind of highlight because I'm an asshole. Uh, just to kind of highlight, I'm a little bit skeptical because of the track record. Yes. So I hope I don't know if uh, bringing on a new project, a new uh ip will bring Marvel back. I, I really think it's a leadership decision, and I don't know. I, I'm I'm worried. Yeah, it's hard to say. It's just like how many it's not even like a reboot on their part, but it's just like we're we're shoving more heroes in there. Yeah. Shoving more heroes. We're going to give them an origin story. And it's just how many times can we do this? But they said that it could or it seems like some some of the promotional materials have indicated it'll be in the 1960s when the movie takes place. And that I think could be that interesting. Could, that could give it an advantage, you know, get it away from all this other bullshit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, no, which you're absolutely that we're right. In that, it's sad we're in that position where we have to say, get it away from all this other bullshit, but it'd be nice. And then if you want them to team up with the Avengers, you know, there's always time travel. There always is. Absolutely. There, there is an infinite amount of possibilities they could do to get the Fantastic Four into the modern time if they wanted to. I'm trying to think of what else has been. The, I guess the last big Marvel thing that has come out this past week has been the X-Men 97 trailer. I didn't watch it. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I watched it. And I'm happy for people that were like, oh, they, they grew up on the X-Men cartoons and everything. I didn't grow up on the X-Men cartoons. I didn't even grow up on the X-Men movies. Those were so much later into my you didn't life. Watch so I didn't watch them really as they have were this... coming out? No. Wow. I didn't. That's why. You, you want to know what's crazy? I don't know why my child brain thought this, but as a kid, I thought they looked stupid. That is crazy. That, that is, is crazy because I liked other superhero movies, and it's like yeah, yeah it's just like yeah, X Men. Well, the leather, the leather, je the leather suits they had in the original, like the first three Brian Singer movies, they didn't really uh, like they didn't translate well to the screen, and it's because they were trying. Yeah. To, they didn't know if they wanted to embrace the superhero nature, if they wanted to go kind of. So they kind of like did a middle ground. I could see how yeah. they're not like a kid would be like whatever. I don't know. They're really good movies, though. I'm sure. I hopefully you would agree. Those yes. early ones are still really good. Yes, I think they're a lot of fun. They're very, like, in the vein of, like, Spider-Man from, yeah. like, 2000. Just the early 2000s superhero movies, they got so much whimsical charm to yeah. them where, like, yes, they're trying to be grounded a little bit, but they're really not. They're really not <laughs> grounded movies in any way, shape, or form. And I think the Spider-Man movies are perfect examples of that because, like, Spider-Man 3... People mm. clown on that movie. Yeah. And it's like a lot of the stuff in Spider-Man 3, there's sprinkles of that in the previous two Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. Like, let's be real. He's always yeah. been a corny kind of actor. And that's what we love about him. Well, it's always like using... I, I was talking about this with uh, 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 in a previous uh, recording I was doing just a second ago about Rebel Moon and Zack Snyder. It's it's all the same elements. You just got to use them the right... All the Raimi-isms from Spider-Man mm -hmm. 2 carry over into Spider-Man 3, but they're arranged in a way that it doesn't work. Same with you know Zack Snyder and Rebel Moon. Zack Snyder is all his... His tics as a director are present from Watchmen to Rebel Moon, but in one yeah. movie, they're arranged in the wrong way and it just doesn't work. And it's almost... In, and it almost ruins some of those things the, that you like about the other movies like uh like madam webb has a bunch of references to the spider-man lore and i'm like don't do that because it's gonna ruin the other <laughs> shit uh it, it's it's one of those things can i take a can i can i branch off and ask you a question just while you're talking about it did you see dr strange multiverse of madness absolutely okay did you view raimi's directing as outdated in that movie at all no, that was a common complaint i heard I didn't know if it was outdated. I just know it was, um, uh, it, it felt like he didn't get a lot of input over some of the more, uh, the deeper elements, like the story. And because it felt like just yeah. a Marvel 
you know, assembly line Marvel movie, except with a couple artistic cinematography flares, like a like yes. the way they shot the scene where Doctor Strange takes on the dark version of himself and a couple other scenes like that where it had like, oh, there's a, a Raimi-ism. It didn't feel mm -hmm. like he had much input over it that much. So I don't know if it was outdated. It, I don't even know if it really felt like Sam Raimi that much. Yeah, no, I agree. Everything you said. Yeah, perfectly. Do you think is out is outdated the the right word? It, no, I it don't think outdated is the term at all. I think a yeah. lot of people a lot of people were getting upset at like a lot of the choices of like cinematography he did, like where he does like all of these like really fast like hyper like zooms and stuffs, yeah. and just very shot. A lot of his just like trademark shots come straight from Evil Dead, which is yeah. like really fast like yeah. tight zoom. It's really fast paced, and a lot of people were voicing saying like, ah, oh, this is. Nah, get that out of here. And it's like, y'all are asking for something new. And then as soon as something new happens, everybody hates it. And I don't understand. I don't get it. And again, like, I'm not caught up in this, like, Marvel bandwagon anymore. I gave up. It's sad. So I, <laughs> I agree. I, I Everybody I talked to, and, and I lost... Now we're on the you got me on the subject. But I lost five <laughs> subscribers this past week because I did a negative review of Marvel's Echo. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I just... I can't speak to, I'm not going to speak to a crowd. I'm not going to cater to a crowd who wants me to believe one way or the other. If I see a movie, it's, it's unfortunate, but everybody I talk to is the same way. It's like Marvel's lost a step. It's unfortunate. Yeah. And I know Ma Madam Web isn't Marvel proper, but it just seems right. like superhero movies in general. I mean, look at the DC cinematic universe. Now it's in this transitional state, but like, man, Aquaman 2 sucked. It's, it's unfortunate. It's feel, it feels like superhero movies are over. Yeah, I that's know. Actually, that's actually what my whole monologue this this week during the episode that this is attached to uh, will be all about how superhero movies are basically over and 2023 was the, the end. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know what Echo is when you brought that up. <laughs> I have never heard of this before in my life and I've been sitting here trying to rack my brain going, what the hell is an Echo? What is Echo? It's what like is the, Echo? It's like the Disney Plus. It's the Disney Plus Marvel show that's a spinoff to the Hawkeye Disney Plus Marvel show. So it's like, I know, it's like how much Does it more... follow Kate? Is that what it is? No, it's not even about, you would think the natural progression would be a, a Kate Bishop spinoff. No, it's about Echo, who is, Echo is the name of the title character, who's like a Native American deaf woman who's missing oh, okay. a leg. And she, tra tra she her power is that she can channel the energy of her ancestors and defeat the kingpin by getting into his mind and realizing that he has toxic masculinity. It's that's basically the show. Cool concept. It was. A <laughs> I feel like if it was, it sounds like it wasn't written good. But uh -huh. that sounds like a cool character. And right it's there. A, it, what sucks too is is now we're doing an echo tangent. It was set. In, yeah, I, it, <laughs> it was set in the ta in the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. So I want to no root shit. For it. I want to yeah, root for it, but they didn't shoot it here. They shot it in Atlanta, Georgia. Damn and it! Now I'm like <laughs> I'm like fuck you guys because you. Dude, it's so cheap to shoot in Oklahoma. Why don't <laughs> studios take advantage of this? That's what I'm saying. It's just because it's another assembly line Marvel product, and that's and that's my fear. With Deadpool, that's my fear with the Fantastic Four. That's what I've seen in, in other movies like the Marvels. We didn't do a proper review of the Marvels on this channel, but it was not good, to say the least. Yeah. Peyton, you uh, I think uh, I think I follow your um, you worked on a movie recently, right? And it's go and it's doing the rounds and it's like uh, Yes. I could you tell us a little bit about that in the three minutes that we have left and Yeah. First, yeah, let's hear about it. We I did a horror comedy called Mysterious Ways it is the best shoot for a film I've ever done. And it's getting accepted to a lot of horror film festivals. And so I'm really excited for people to see it. Uh, it's first like uh, national premiere is going to be in March. At a, I forgot the name of the film festival, but it's a very fun horror film festival in Wisconsin where a lot of cool independent uh, horror features are going to be presented for the first time. And so I'm excited to hear the feedback about it because obviously we've all seen it, the cast and crew. We love it. We're absolutely biased about it. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. I show it to my wife. She thinks it's hilarious. I'm in it. So like she <laughs> has to say that. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be making the rounds and I'm really excited. I'm going to attend one of the film festivals. So I'm excited to see other people's eyes on it. It's called Mysterious Ways. Is there and, a, like a social media or a website that if yeah, somebody can check on, and see, maybe it's near them? Yeah, on Instagram and Facebook, Mysterious Ways Movie. 
uh, at Mysterious Ways movie. Uh, that's where all the updates are about it. And there's three film festivals it's going to right now. But we're we're only at the beginning of the season. There's just going to be more. It's just going to we're excited to do it throughout this year. Any long term plans for like a home media release? Or I'm sure that's way down the pipeline. Uh, just from uh, what I've learned and everything, getting your stuff on streaming is absolutely easy. Uh, it's so easy. Okay. Apparently, there's websites that getting your work on Prime is as easy as a few clicks. I've learned, okay. which is insane. So, worst case scenario, it's on Prime. But I know through film festivals and everything, uh, part of the benefit of that is uh, distributors uh, get to look at your work. So, yeah. After best case scenario are done best case yeah. scenario somebody sees it wants to run with it uh whether it means it's it's going straight to stores or best case scenario it gets a theatrical release i know that's one in a million but anything's possible anything's so possible. we'll see and, and at mysterious ways movie on facebook yeah. and instagram people can however it ends up they can follow along there and see where they can see it hopefully at a film festival or a theater eventually absolutely perfect peyton grufik Thank you so much. Pleasure to have you on the show again. Thank you, dude. It's always a pleasure to be here. All right, that's our show. I'd like to send a special thank you to our guests for joining us this week. Make sure you tune in next week as we discuss the best movies of 2023. If you'd like to follow us on TikTok, Facebook, you can follow us there at The Film Fan Club. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Samuel D. Carico. But of course, make sure you like us on YouTube, rate us on Apple and Spotify, and tune in next week. I'll see you then. Thanks so much, folks.